Welcome to this edition of Open SCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at building this in code. What What is this? This is a K-cup holder, so for a Keurig coffee maker. Uh, this is a bit inspired by Chuck Hellebuck. He's recently done one where he did a, a very interesting and you know, very quick design in uh, Tinkercad, uh, which kind of inspired me. This has been on my list for a while. And after seeing, um, you know, Chuck's video kind of inspired me to get off my my button code something here. So one of the things I wanted to do was just kind of experiment with creating, uh, having a standing model in, in OpenSCAD for the pods themselves. And so you can kind of see here, we've done that. And I've covered this out, I think, in an, another video episode. Uh, showing you how to create the pods. So in this episode, we're going to take the pods and do something with them. And what we're going to do is build a small 3D printed holder. Now, um, what I've done in this case is, uh, you know, this isn't, uh, you know, a big uh, holder. I mean, it's it's it, it's only holding three pods, but it's just to kind of give you an idea. And part of the challenge is obviously you know printing it on you know a 3d printer with an 8 inch by 8 inch bed now this is approximately a little over six this is this fills up lengthwise about the complete bed and about half of the bed and you can print both of these parts together but it's to give you an idea and I wanted to maintain the coffee cup shape as you see here and you know give it that look so it was kind of difficult to go any bigger but you can kind of get the whole idea is is to share how this all goes together so you can do your own and you can make it whatever shape you want because I've already got some ideas for some other interesting ones that I'm going to do in future builds but let's get into the code a little bit there's a couple pieces I want to share with you guys. And again, um, apologies. Um, I know several people have written about the size of the code. I'm really not sure how I can make it any bigger. But one of the things that um, up front that I do want to share is I do document or attempt to actually document the code very well. So um, you can kind of go into the code, get the code from the site, which is always in the link of the video down below on YouTube and the idea is I kind of voice over some of the key aspects and you can kind of go back and look at those key aspects. So in this case uh, where I want to start out with now this, this model is uh, semi parametric in that um, I, I didn't whip this up fully parametric because I was just really messing around with it so uh, what I've done is I set up the variables here uh, in the um, uh, top in the parameter section. You notice I'm using my standard template format. So the first one we have is thickness. So how thick will this be? And this only affects right now the um, uh, cup piece. The, the base piece is, is hard coded. So something you can probably change if you want and I'll probably change it in a future version. The other piece is the angle. So how do you want to change the angle of the K cup? So right now I've got it set to about 10. So just for grins and giggles if we change this to 20 and then we recalculate it see how it tips them because that's the biggest thing I wanted to experiment with this particular piece of code it is is tilting it because the interesting thing is when we go to 3d print this you know it's going to print it out you know like this with the you know the insert being you know in short oblong so I thought this was actually pretty cool because we'll be able to print this completely vertical but yet the pods will sit in an angle now I chose 10 percent you can probably experiment around how how you uh, want now the other piece I did here is the insert so this is how far will the pod go in now I'm gonna tell you up front I cheated a little bit in doing this I'm shooting this piece at the very end so I've already printed this and one of the things I know is that well, I've already upped it to 15 from 10, and, and you may even want to go 20 about how far it goes in. See how this how this changes it? Because one thing I discovered when I created the K-cup model, not all K-cups are identical. So uh, they do have slight variations in size. So some will go in further than others. So I, I would actually err on the side of caution. You know, we're you know making the the opening larger is, is better. Um, scale in inches. So one of the things I did do is I, I scaled this because I wanted to think about this in inches to mesh it for the bed. So long story short, I made this at six inches. So if I change this to eight, you can see the changes scale, but it doesn't change the scale 
of the well, it doesn't add more holes, if you will. It maintains the scale of where the K cups go. But if you had like a G Max printer, you could just enter a bigger number and this would scale it to however big. And so that's kind of cool. And just to kind of give you an idea. So it is semi parametric. Um, and again, um, I just kind of wanted to play around with the idea, and I thought the idea of a coffee cup holder was, was pretty cool. Now, one of the pieces that I do here, another big trick, is is right here that I want to show you guys. And, and, and I think for some of the more seasoned, uh, you know, open SCAD users out there, they, they might snicker at me a little bit. But um, one of the tricks that, that I do is I break up pieces... Um, how I'm going to print them into different modules and then execute the modules up here. And what do I mean by that? Well, so we have two two pieces here really. So, and I've shown I'm showing them assembles. However, when it comes to to printing them or downloading them, it's going to come as is is one complete model. So, all I simply do is comment this out and then the base disappears and boom I can you know render this and save and export this as an STL and same thing with the other one so a minor change is there I could also do this programmatically but it's just easier throwing in the slashes now one of the other things I'm gonna call your attention back over here to the model uh, you notice I, I created this tab over here because one of the pieces that I want to do is I want this to be both laser cuttable potentially CNC-able as well as 3D printable because what I can do with this shape is I can actually lay it down and then uh, create a DXF out of, it, out of it and then put it in my laser cutter because one of the things I do plan on doing as you'll hear in the rest of the video is uh, you know I do want to do I do want to do that does not sound right I, I want to create a laser cut version of this also because with the laser cutter I can go quite a bit bigger I can go 12 by 10 and then on the CNC I can go almost you know 24 by 18 so I, I can really do some different things and I think it would be really kind of cool uh, potentially to do a large version of this uh, out of some translucent type of acrylic and either CNC it or laser cut it and then put LEDs in the bottom to to uplight this whole thing and I think that would look really cool so you might see that as an experiment come out in, in, in the near future but anyways the, that doesn't have too much to do with open SCAT code at least at the, at the moment uh, so the other piece I do notice again back here uh, is I do the functional translate uh, to the pieces to assemble them because if I don't you know it just kind of comes out wherever it comes out on the, the screen so this is how I do my assembly and I prefer doing my assembly here rather than someplace else so I can keep track of it and then one of the things that you you can do is also and I'll probably cover in a future episode is is animate the assembly of this which I think would be really neat but uh, again for right now just kind of want to you know get some of the basic code ideas down and we can you know move into that um, this is the K cup module we've seen the K cup module before nothing nothing really new here I've just I've just imported it now one of the things that I like to do uh, for the channel is is embed the actual all the modules I'm using now I can call this module externally but then if you download the code and you don't have the module in the right place and you try running the code it doesn't work so so one of the things please keep in mind I'm making this code friendly for download and use and then also if you're not following along completely in, in, in every episode you can still make the code work so please please keep in mind I do understand that but I'm just trying to you know not trying to bloat the code but make it easy to follow uh, because that's a real key here is I, I, I'm, I'm kind of going through this showing how to put the various pieces together again there's a lot of good videos that show you how to do the actual coding like how a cylinder works and a cube works and, and and I'm assuming you already know a bit of that and so I'm again more focusing on the workflow and how do you assemble the objects and partly I'm learning along the way too um, so the next piece is we go into the actually the coffee cup module and this is where we create the body of the coffee cup right here and you can kind of see all the base, the, 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 the basics. So we start the union of the body and then we subtract out, you know, the difference because actually the coffee cup is a big circle. And so if we, um, uh, if we actually 
put in a percent. Let's take a look at, you can see, see the coffee cup over here is just actually nothing more than a big circle. And then what we're doing is we take a cube from down here on this section and cut this, this circle in half and then makes it the coffee cup and then we add another cylinder over here for the handle and then we put another cube at the bottom to create this base and then another cube for the tab that we saw earlier so um, yeah it's just you know simply you know primitive objects so which is really cool and that's one of the things I really love about 3d design is you can is, is everything in the world is, is based upon a primitive object and you can create just about anything with those primitive shapes so that's eh, a lot of fun just to think about things that way the um, the base is actually pretty simple itself um, we ju we just uh, create you know an oval tube uh, in short and knock out uh, down here we knock out the center for the tab now one of the things I've thrown in here is this is from the MCAD library I've actually modified this a little bit to not do the center knockout so it just creates an oval so you'll see this quite a bit more I think in some of the other designs I'm going to use um, one of the things that's on my list to do is I'd like to wor start working on an extended library of calls for open SCAD but that'll come into the future because uh, uh, I, I just think it's easy to work with, but then I'm, what I'm a little bit concerned with is I, I'm going to want to call those externally, and as I've already mentioned, I tried to, in, to incorporate everything, so I'm still trying to figure out how to work those two together so it becomes smooth on the website and you know everybody can follow along. So anyways, uh, something for the future. So in short, this was really a fun project. So let's go ahead, let's watch a time lapse of this printing out, and then let's come back to the bench and let's put it together and take a look at it because I really want to show you guys, you know, the concept of this is how do you go from, you know, you know, just rote code in the machine to a 3D printer to an actual finished product. That's, that's the cool thing about this channel uh, is that focus. So let's go ahead, take a look at those, and we'll see you back at the bench after the time. Welcome back to this episode of OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. So we've taken a look in the computer at the models. We've taken a look at the time lapse of it printing. So here's the end product. Um, so it printed out pretty well in in, uh, in uh, PLA. Now one of the things I, I printed, I flipped them on the bed so the front side would have been printed down. So against this uh, PEI um, base so it came out very nice and so we have the base and we have the uh, the cup and then long story short I might have to clean this up a little bit but the idea is is that the two two kind of mate and it's a little bit of a tight fit so I'm gonna have to clean this up so let's go clean this up and then take a little bit more detailed look at how it goes together so we took a we, we saw that we saw it in the computer we saw the time lapse we saw it on the print bed and here here it is all together now I also put an overlay of it on the kitchen counter so you can kind of get more of an idea. Uh, however, one of the things I would change is, uh, and, and that I want to point out first, is it doesn't appear all K-cups are e created equal because I actually modeled it off this K-cup. However, and I've chosen three, I've got a very large collection of K-cups, so I, I've chosen three just to show the example, and you can kind of see how far each one goes in. Now, what I did, and we looked at this, in the code is I actually tilted these in, and pushed these in and if you actually look at the the code itself they seem to go in a little bit further than than this so it, it's kind of a little bit variable so I would definitely push the next version and push these in further um, you know they stay in but you have to actually put them in with a little twist or turn to get them to stick because if you just sit them there well this one actually stays pretty good but like this one whoops this this one eh, it's not too bad but I, I think it'd go in further because like you like you just saw when I pulled that one out this one popped out anyways um, it actually turned out pretty good so I, I think there's a couple different um, avenues to a actually produce a hybrid so I'm gonna actually take this model expand it and, and do probably a CNC and a laser cut version of this also 
I'm also going to look at doing one where I have a wood base, where I CNC out a wood base and have this piece sit in wood base, stain it, and it looks nice. And, and so, again, the options are, are just, there's a ton of them. Uh, and I do the bigger tarantula, I think I'll do a bigger version of this. And so, anyways, I had a lot of fun with this and just kind of want to thank Chuck Hellebuck for inspiring me to do this because i um, been kicking around something like this for a while and he did one and got me thinking about it again because it was in the back of my mind. And I uh, had a few moments and whipped this up. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.